Welcome, everybody. It's nice to join us at the kickoff of the Global One Health Special Prize within a transformative research challenge. It's a, a mouthful, but I promise you after this webinar, you know everything about it. Um, we are hosting uh, with Wageningen University and Research together with the World Food Forum FAO. You can see my partner, colleague from the World Food Forum, Hanin. In, uh, hey, everyone. In... Welcome, Hanin. Um, so, yeah, I, I suggest we will uh, immediately start. I will uh, start with explaining to you what you can expect for today for this hour of a webinar. So, first of all, my name is Miriam Troost. I uh, work at the Wur Student Challenge team at Wageningen University and Research. And we are so happy to host this Global One Health, Health uh, Special Prize. Um, we will have uh, some explanation, of course, about uh, the, uh, the prize. But first of all, we will hear Hanin about the Transformative Research Challenge as a whole. And Hanin will also tell you a little bit more about the World Food Forum. Then we will have some in-depth uh, speeches by uh, Professor Wim van der Poel, by Dr. Annabel Dabiron and Jackie O'Wheely, PhD candidate from Wageningen University and Research and topped off with uh, a speech from Jung Xia Song from the FAO. So they will all tell you a little bit more in depth on global one health topics. Um, after they speak, we will have room for questions for the speakers. So please use the chat function for that. And then uh, we have Dr. Jaukje Siebenga from Wageningen University and Research, and she will tell you about uh, the Global One Health Special Prize and how you can apply and what we expect, deadlines, timelines, etc. After that, we are open for questions about uh, participating for the prize. So without further ado, I want to give the floor uh, to Hanin to explain more about the World Food Forum. Thank you, Miriam, and hi, everyone. It's great to be here, and thank you for joining the event today. So my name is Hanin Abu Salah. I work for the Innovation Tech of the World Food Forum, and uh, today I'll take you through uh, a, a small introduction about the uh, World Food Forum as well as the Transformative Research Challenge. Um, so uh, basically, uh, the World Food Forum is an independent uh, uh, youth-led uh, uh, global network of partners facilitated by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN. Um, the World Food Forum aims to spark a global movement uh, that empowers young people to um, support our agri-food systems and help end hunger. Um, we also aim uh, at the World Food Forum to elevate the innovators and uh, innovative solutions that are already making a difference. Um, 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 uh, yeah, and uh, today uh, we we're going to talk in uh, specific about the uh, PRC, the Transformative Research Challenge. Um, so uh, basically, the Transformative Research Challenge is uh, uh, an open call uh, for uh, teams of uh, young and young at heart researchers to um, propose an uh, innovative research idea to help end hunger and transform our agri-food uh, systems. The uh, competition consists of three phases. The first one is uh, uh, the, the, the concept node phase, where we invite you to submit uh, the two-page concept note. The phase two uh, um, is about mentorship. So uh, after we receive the uh, concept notes from uh, uh, innovators from all over the world, we um, shortlist individuals by uh, uh, passing the concept notes uh, to uh, the evaluation phase uh, done by expert reviewers who are experts in their field. Um, after the, f the first phase of the evaluation, uh, you will be uh, mentored with uh, uh, mentors who are also experts in their fees to help you um, translate your concept note into a more concrete uh, research output. Uh, the uh, last phase is uh, about uh, um, coaching. So um, after you have been paired with mentors and prepared your research output, it's time now to um, you know shortlist the teams that will uh, receive the coaching. So we have a, a, a second round of 
uh, evaluation. And then we shortlist our uh, finalists uh, to be, uh, um, you know, trained into uh, a coaching uh, um, uh, training. So uh, you will be also uh, uh, invited to join a, a masterclass uh, on uh, a lightning talk to uh, present your idea at the World Food Forum uh, global stage in uh, October 2023. Um, today, um, uh, at this uh, event, we are uh, launching the Global One Health Special Prize on uh, 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 and on uh, One Health theme. So uh, mainly, the, the the special this special prize is covering the uh, effective and sustainable uh, solutions that help foster health and. Uh, uh, to, you know, to uh, um, the main purpose is to reduce the emerging uh, infections and zoonotic diseases uh, um, uh, by preventing the uh, spillovers and the management uh, and control. So the priority of this special prize uh, will be giving to um, uh, specific subtopics focusing on uh, the zoonoses that uh, have the uh, potential to become a, a pandemic um yeah so that's it on the uh main um scale of the uh, uh one health special prize uh we encourage you to uh, stay within this um within this uh, call within this event to uh know more about the uh, uh timeline and the um um a scope of this special prize and to learn more in details uh and um, um as uh, i said before we are glad to um uh, have you here today and we look forward to uh, receiving uh, um, many many applications from all over the world uh and uh, yeah stay tuned for more uh, uh, information and now i hand it back to uh, my colleague uh, joki thank you so much thank you uh, hanin I think it's very clear. And later on in this webinar, Jaukje Simega will explain more about the timeline and how you can apply. Um, so without further ado, I wanted to start with the, the speakers of today. I see Wim already appearing, Wim van der Poel. Wim is a professor at Wageningen University and Research, and he will give an introduction to the global One Health approach and focus on research both at VER and uh, globally. So uh, Wim, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Mirjo, and uh, welcome everybody uh, listening to this uh, webinar. Um, I'm a professor of emerging and uh, zoonotic viruses, and I also work according to the so-called Global One Health approach. So this presentation is a bit, little bit about introducing this Global One Health approach in the research that we do. Within Wagen University, we have five important research uh, divisions, and one of them is the animal sciences divisions. I will not discuss too much about this, but just to mention that uh, I work in the Wageningen Bioveterinary Research Institute, which is part of the animal science divi uh, sciences division within Wagen University. On the picture, you can see that we have uh, a high containment unit, where we work with uh, dangerous viruses and also zoonotic viruses. So uh, working on this kind of infectious disease threats is really within the core of our activities. In this uh, institute, we work with zoonotic viruses, we work with other zoonotic pathogens, and we also work on antimicrobial resistance, important topics within the global One Health field. Um, a little bit about uh, the definition of what is One Health, and actually the most important uh, sentence on this uh, quite busy slide is the first one. One Health is the integrated unifying approach that aims to sustainably balance and optimize the health of people, animals and ecosystems. And this also includes plants. It's very important to realize that the health of these systems, these uh, 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 organisms are really connected and that we should work on all these different uh, organisms and systems to uh, improve the health of our of our well-being. Um, uh, the other parts of the slides are more explaining this and this definition is the definition by the high level, the One Health High Level Expert Committee. 
and I would advise to follow this division because uh, to follow this definition because it's important to realize that we use the same def definition for one health as much as possible. Um, to start a little bit about uh, the research we, we do, uh, we are uh, as Wagen University involved in a number of important One Health networks. We started the Global One Health team in 2016, and now we are part of also also part of the Netherlands Center for One Health, and we also are involved in a large project on One Health, the so-called One Health Pact focusing on arboviruses, uh, uh, well, protection against arbovirus, threatening uh, public health. We are also part of the so-called Global One Health Research Partnership, a partnership of four important uh, agriculture universities in the world, Davis in USA, Nanjing in China, Meshi in New Zealand, and our university in Wageningen. Uh, on the European level, we have an important One Health cooperation in the European Joint Programme for, for One Health, in which a large number of uh, public health institutes and veterinary health institutes in Europe are involved. Uh, and this programme includes a number of uh, scientific research projects. Uh, one example is, for example, the Coverin project, a project on coronaviruses that we started uh, right after the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. We also do training, uh, uh, and we are uh, in, we have included uh, also uh, other uh, research projects. Uh, for example, another example is the hepatitis E virus project or several projects on hepatitis E virus where we look at uh, all the mechanisms for uh, hepatitis E virus transmission. There are uh, there is a zoonotic transmission, but there is also transmission from the environment and we try to control that uh, in a so-called One Health approach. So this is an example of a research project where we really need a One Health approach to uh, uh, cope with the disease or to control the threats from this disease. Another example is the SARS coronavirus pandemic. In the SARS coronavirus pandemic, uh, it was clear that the origin of the virus was uh, from an animal reservoir. And uh, recently there have also been reports about uh, intermediate uh, hosts of the virus uh, through uh, a marketplace in Wuhan in China. Uh, so uh, the One Health approach is also very important for the SARS coronavirus pandemic. And I will explain a little bit more about that because in the Netherlands, we were facing an outbreak in mink the SARS coronavirus in the Netherlands was transmitted from humans to mink. This caused, caused an outbreak in the mink farms and from the mink farms there was transmission back to humans. And we were able to cope with this outbreak by close, through close collaboration between the public health sector, uh, the uh, veterinary health sector and also people working on environmental transmission. There were measurements done, done uh, in the environment uh, from air samplers. So this is, is a clear example where we were able to control a disease through a close, close uh, One Health cooperation. Okay, and the next slide uh, is about uh, a report uh, that we uh, produced in the Netherlands, uh, commissioned by the Dutch Parliament. Uh, the front page of the report is on the right side of this slide, and this report was about a better preparedness for emerging zoonosis. The committee was uh, 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 put together by the uh, government and included a number of uh, uh, zoonosis experts, and uh, the report includes uh, uh, close to 70 recommendations that were followed by the Dutch Parliament to cope with uh, uh, emerging zoonoses in the future. 
In Wagen University, we have started the so-called ARACE program, and that's the picture on the left. Uh, the ARACE program is a program to, uh, for early response and rapid action for uh, zoonotic emergencies. And in that project, we work on preparedness, prevention, response, and also on training uh, on emerging zoonosis in a so-called One Health approach. So uh, this was a short presentation to give you a flavor of all kind of research that we do in Wagen University in a, a One Health approach. And that's where I would like to end this presentation with a picture of our high containment unit, which is based in Lelystad in the center of the Netherlands. And I give the word back to, uh, to Mirjam to introduce the next speaker. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you, Wim. Uh, we will expect you back for the questions to the speakers uh, later on, so uh, please stay tuned. Uh, okay. For all the audience, if you have a question, please put it in the chat. We will get back to you later. And uh, yeah, I see already uh, a new colleague of mine, uh, Annabel, appearing on the screen. Um, so we had some insights on the Global One Health approach at Wageningen University and globally. And now we want to give the floor to Annabel uh, Dabuiron and uh, Jackie O'Willy from Wageningen University and Research. They will tell you a little bit more on Global One Health research in practice. Both of them, they have uh, an example. Yeah, and I'm very curious to hear. So Annabel, please go ahead. Thanks a lot, Miriam. Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here with you today. So I'm Annabel Dabuiron. I'm from uh, Wageningen University and Research and more specifically from the Wageningen Center for Development Innovation. And um, I work, I'm a livestock uh, advisor specialist. I'm a veterinarian by training, and then I joined more the social science uh, world. And so today I was uh, asked to um, briefly pitch you um, uh, um, uh, one example of a, a project to help you to start to think and to activate your thinking and your thoughts on how to put global one else in practice. Um, so first of all, I, I would really like to um, uh, stress out that um, you have the opportunity with this challenge, uh, I think, to be creative and to realize that always won't open new doors. So really try, I would really um, encourage you in your proposition, in your new ideas, in the concept that you will submit to this challenge to try to be creative and try to um, imagine new ways to think of health and global one health uh, for the future. And how can you help us to uh, um, improve the health of animals, of environment, uh, of humans um, by being more creative in our approaches? And with you, I wanted just to share one example. Uh, so among, I'm, I'm sure there is a lot of examples that I could have picked, uh, but I decided to pick the um, a work that I'm not involved in. So I'm really uh, more advocating for others' work, um, but it's called Health and Territories Project. Um, and with this project, I try to really put into practice uh, a global One Health approach. And to do that, um, um, the, their, their, uh, their rationale is that they uh, realize that uh, zoonosis, uh, but also like environmental pollution, uh, AMR, are very often linked to agricultural production system. And so starting from this point, they decided to explore the question um, uh, that is, so can the agroecological agro transition of territories help to resolve zoonosis, AMR, and environmental pollution. So they um, try to really uh, bring, uh, bring in the systemic perspective of agricultural uh, production. And so they will do this work um, in both in partnership uh, together with institutions from Senegal, Benin, Laos, and Cambodia. And it's um, uh, coordinated by CIRAD, which is a French uh, uh, research organization. And so if I explain a bit more what they have in mind with this, um, I think, very interesting project, is that they will um, first try to think with the local communities, with the uh, um, inhabitants of the territories, they will try to first co-define what is health for the inhabitants. What do they perceive as health 
and what is a healthy territory um, for the inhabitants. And starting from there, so defining what is for them human health, animal health, plant health, and environmental health, as you can see in the figure. Uh, starting from this definition, they will try then uh, through this research activity to try to co-define local collective actions that will be aimed to improve health in all its dimension um, uh, um, and uh, together with the inhabitants. And so with this uh, simple example, I just wanted to uh, share with you um, um, one story on how you can try to put into practice one health in your research activity, in your initiatives, so that uh, together with the citizens, with society, you can try to address uh, health issues and um, um, imagine new solution for a healthier um, uh, environment, healthier health for animals and humans. And with that, I'm going to stop and I'm really looking forward to uh, receive your proposition and, and explore further your, your concepts. Thanks a lot. Jackie, I hand over to you. Well, thanks, Annabelle, for the presentation. So my name is Jacqueline Willy, a PhD candidate at the Department of Social Science of Wageningen University and Research. I present to you my PhD project entitled Integration of Local with Expert Knowledge in livestock disease management in Kenya smallholder farming settings. So my research context is Kisumu County in the Western region of Kenya, as you can see it on the map here. Why I chose this uh, region is because it's a region that is known for its endemic prone to diseases all the time, uh, like uh, endemic diseases such as malaria, we have uh, HIV and AIDS, and uh, most of the inhabitants here normally suffer from these re-emerging infectious diseases. And also agriculture is the main source of livelihood there. And sometimes we do not understand how they get infected through animal, through agriculture production systems. So some of the main diseases that affect that region in the human interface, we have uh, respiratory tract infections, which is, for example, you have the TB, and also we have the foodborne illnesses that is caused by, con by consuming contaminated uh, unpasteurized milk that leads to brucellosis at some point. Then for the animals, they get infected with the Rift Valley fever, we have foot and mouth diseases. At the environment, I'm looking at the perspective of whereby when people use uh, infected manure for their farming, at some point, these uh, pathogens get uh, transmitted or they get infected through airborne when it is blown by wind or dust, they get to inhale that. For the environment, also, we look at the housing structure. With the housing structure, I'm looking at the aspect whereby people live in confined housing structures with their animals, and sometimes then they find it difficult to try and separate sick animals from uh, healthy ones. Hence, this cross uh, contamination of diseases. As you can see on this diagram, this is a continuation of what I mean by disease transmission pathways, where, for example, when you look at uh, my main research is about integrating the local and the expert knowledge. With the local knowledge, now I look at the animal farming activities that uh, these uh, smallholder farming systems are involved in. For example, when you look at the human interface here, I'm trying to look at how they contaminate uh, practices such as consuming and pasteurized food or food that is not well sanitized. Then we also have that they, they, they practice their agricultural activities in the forest where the same place where animals also meet to go and graze and also domestic animals also graze there. And at some point, all this leads to cross infection. When you look at the environment, at some point, uh, animals come to drink from the same water source point. Human beings drink uh, fetch water for their for their domestic use, and also we have uh, water uh, um, domestic animals also going to drink water there for their own uh, to quench their thirst. So, so with all these uh, four activities, we find that there's an interconnectedness or cross linkages of disease transmission between the animal, human and the environment interface, which are some of the local factors that contribute to that. And then uh, when you look at the dark arrows represent uh, the direct transmission and uh, the light arrows represent uh, the indirect transmission, meaning that they don't get to meet together at one point, but what their, their, their steps or activities that happen there contribute to the infections of these diseases. So with that, my main research question is trying to understand what is the existing knowledge among farmers and experts about livestock disease management and protection of human health in Kenya. With the farmers expert, I'm looking at how they use their local practices. For example, we can find that uh, culture sometimes demands that they have to eat some animal source products without having to pasteurize them, and that can contribute to disease transmission. 
And from the expert side, I'm looking at the scientific ways of trying to protect the diseases and what modes lead to the disease transmission. And this is what led me to this overarching research question and trying to understand how these knowledges can be integrated or disconnected in terms of trying to understand the linkages and find ways of managing the diseases among the farmers. So for my research methods, I'm going, I'm going to use a qualitative studies research design where I'm going to do document analysis, which I've already done. And in, in a few months, I'm supposed to start my field work to go and investigate how farmers describe diseases, how they understand the different disease transmission pathways. This I will do through semi-structured interviews with farmers. We also have uh, community health workers. We have extension educationists and also some local community health workers, including also experts, people from the scientific uh, arena. So again, I'll also do focus group discussion to try and understand their shared experiences about some specific common diseases that have affected the community at some point and how and the kind of practices they've used to manage or what practices have led to the transmission of those diseases. For the last one, I will also use uh, workshops. For the workshop, I'm going to um, conduct uh, an exercise with the key stakeholders who are, who are the policy makers. We have community health workers also. We have a smallholder farming system, farmers who are the major stakeholders in this uh, project that I'm working with. So with them and also non-governmental organization will be part of my project because they'll be able to define different ways of uh, managing diseases and also how they understand the different transmission pathways of diseases. And with this, I think it will be able to enable me to answer my research question, which is livestock disease management and transmission among smallholder farming systems. And with that, I hand over to Junissa for her presentation. Yeah, thank you so much, Jackie, and uh, thank you, Annabelle. I think that these were uh, wonderful uh, examples of research, and I hope it sparked some ideas with uh, the people watching and uh, who want to submit a proposal for our special prize. Um, so our next speaker is from FAO. I see, ah, hello, Jungsia. Uh, it's Jungsia Song, a Senior Animal Health Officer. And um, yeah, please, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Ryuki. Um, and good morning, good afternoon, colleagues. And we are grateful for this opportunity for FAO to engage with the youth in this uh, transformative research challenge. At FAO, we believe that young people are the next generation to continue the One Health legacy. This is why we fully support this youth effort in, a, in a, advancing more innovative ideas by youth and for youth on One Health. Youth and their commitment to creating One Health, a gold standard, will ultimately determine the future of the One Health. The Center for Zoonotic Disease and AMR in FAO has committed to One Health youth engagement and is very excited to collaborate with different partners on this project, aiming to deliver future One Health programs directly to young people. I feel promotes a One Health approach as part of agri-food system transformation for the health of people, animals, plant, and environment. A new strategic framework has a dedicated program, One Health Priority Program Area. The short, term is, short name is One Health PPA. This One Health PPA encompasses the work across multiple streams of the work, including animal plant environment health and aims to provide an integrated one health solution to support countries. At the country level, FAO supports the review, update and implementation of relevant national plans, policies and programs to integrate all dimensions of one health, including those on such as biodiversity, environment and climate change just to name a few. So the overall um, impact of the One House PPA is to ensure sustainable consumption and the production patterns through sustainable and inclusive food and agriculture supply chain at a local, regional, and also a global level, ensuring resilient agri-food system in a changing climate and environment. The Joint Center for Zoonotic Disease and AMR in FAO, it coordinates the One Health 
across the different FAO divisions to mainstream the One Health work in the FAO uh, activities. So come to uh, the quadripartite collaboration. On 17 March 2022, the heads of the quadripartite, namely uh, FAO, UNEP, WHO, and the WOWA, uh, they signed a momentum of uh, memorandum of understanding for joint One Health work, by which UNEP joined the former tripartite, that's FAO, w, uh, WHO, and WOWA, as an equal partner and to form a new quadripartite collaboration for One Health. Last week, the quadripartite conducted the first annual face-to-face -face meeting, where the quadripartite organizations working on One Health made a, a joint call for inc to increase the global uh, action. So there are six, uh, seven priorities, uh, priority areas were highlighted in this is a joint call to action. So number one is prioritize One Health in the uh, international political agenda, increase understanding and advocate for the adoption and the promotion of enhanced intersectoral health governance. Number two is strengthening national One Health policies, strategies, and plans. Number three is accelerate the implementation of One Health plans. Number four, build intersectoral One Health workforces. Number five is strengthening the sustained prevention of pandemics and health stress at the source. Number six is encourage and strengthen One Health scientific knowledge and evidence uh, creating and exchange. Number seven, increase investment and the financing of One Health strategies and plans. So last year, um, the, the quadripartite organization developed the joint plan of action and with the support from the One Health high-level expert panel. So this is structured around six action track, um, or we can also say that's priorities to optimize better One Health implementation. Building onto this joint work, the quadripartite is in the process to finalize a One Health joint plan of action implementation guidelines that will translate the objective of this One Health GPA into practical guidance for national level action. The One Health specialized uh, uh, special prize, what FAO can offer? So this One Health specialized, uh, special prize create a collaboration with the World Food Forum, Bakeningi University and the research and the, the, uh, the center, I mean, the Zoonotic Disease and Antimicrobial Resistance Center in FAO. So it falls squarely into several prioritized categories within the joint call to action, which is mentioned in the, in the last slides. The unique prize empowers young people to take direct charge of this health future they desire. It also necessitates uh, circles, cir critical thinking, leadership and issue solving with the single health context. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been a significant drive to prevent pestilence failover between the environment, animal and the people while maintaining the integrity of food systems. To further this One Health Specialized Prize, FAO, we would like to, um, to publicize it through our networks and we are we will happy to uh, to include it in FU's One Health uh, newsletter. This newsletter will be published uh, on a monthly basis. So we have committed to assisting in shortlisting of applicants engaging in the final selection processes and providing ment uh, mentorship as needed. So uh, with that, I thank you very much for your attention and over back to you, Chair. Well, um, thank you, thank you, Yungxia. Um, I'll, I'll just very briefly introduce myself, um, and thank you to all the other presenters as well. My name is uh, Yao Kisuha, and I'm the program manager of um, many things global One Health here at, 
at, at Wageningen University and research. And we're very excited to be able to um, uh, host this special prize uh, and to host today's um, uh, webinar as a launch of this special prize. Uh, and in a minute, I will tell you a little bit more about the prize and what the, the guidelines are and what the, the goals are and, and, and also, importantly, what you can win. Uh, but before I do that, I would like to um, give the speakers uh, or rather the audience the opportunity to ask some questions to the speakers. So if you have any questions, please type them in the chat. Um, and um, since I haven't seen any questions uh, so far, I uh, know that one of the speakers has a question for one of the other speakers. Um, so if we can switch to the speaker mode. So if um, Miriam, if you can switch off the slides, I'm not sure how to do that myself. Um, and then uh, Wim and um, Jungsha and Annabelle and Jacqueline, if you can switch your cameras on. Uh, then Jacqueline has a question for Wim. Do you want to ask a question yourself? I don't know if Wim is here. I think he's there. I have to re-enter. <laughs> we can hear you. So. Yes, there you are. Jacqueline, you have a question for Wim. Yes, yes, I posted it on the chat. It's about uh, how do you translate uh, these huge volumes of work? Because I can imagine <coughs> whatever kind of research you do is about science for impact. And policymakers sometimes, they don't have this time of reading this kind of information. How do you make it to be more simplified to them with for policy or implement a specific policy? Well, <clears throat> what, we, what we try to do is to uh, connect our stakeholders as much as possible. So what we do is uh, uh, that of the projects that we do, we organize meetings uh, where we invite our stakeholders also. So that means that we are invite organizations like uh, FAO, WHO, uh, ECDC in Europe, and also WOA, the World Organization of Animal Health, <coughs> to our meetings, and we present results. Um, what we also do is to we, we try to provide those stakeholders with the reports of our outcomes, and that's how we try to connect them. <coughs> and if we're uh, going to work on a new proposal, we also try to include opinions of our stakeholders as much as possible. So that's how we work. Uh, of course, we use uh, social media like uh, websites, uh, uh, announcements in uh, in platforms like Twitter and uh, Facebook also. But uh, uh, the main thing is to really try to connect them uh, to discuss the results and to discuss our initiatives on new projects. <clears throat> yeah, thanks for the answer. Um, maybe a question for either you, Jacqueline, or for you, Annabelle. Um, I'm, I'm curious how you decide which stakeholders to involve in your projects, because I, I, I see, Jacqueline, in your, your uh, plan for your PhD studies, you, you very much intend to involve um, uh, stakeholders. So how do you decide who are important and who might not be as important and who, who to take along from the beginning and maybe who you can asked to join at a later stage? Well, oh, that's a good question. Uh, what I can say is that uh, for my methods, I intend to use uh, something called a uh, purposive sampling te technique for data collection. So with that, I'm going to go for people that I know have a specific information that I need. For example, if you are a vet, I'll go to you because I know you understand the dynamics of how to test a disease, animal diseases, or if you're a community health worker, I also go to the same way, looking at the kind of things you know. Then from there, if uh, they can even do like a snowballing, they refer me to other people. So with that, I get uh, the exact amount of information that I need for my research. Yes. And if I can answer from my side, my simple answer would be do stakeholder analysis, because then you have a tool to decide and you have an info. There is a lot of tools out there to decide which stakeholder is relevant according to what is your according to your goal. So you can yeah screen and analyze the different stakeholders according to different parameters, the power, the influence that they can have. Um, and according to that, then you can kind of inform your decision on whom to involve 
uh, whom to invite, involve, whom to yeah, connect with, and when. So, um, yeah, that would be my uh, simple answer. See, there, there you have some excellent tips from, from um, the experienced experts. Use a tool to identify who your key stakeholders are and then involve the ones that really have something to contribute and, and something to gain as well. Um, well, I'd like to thank our speakers again, and then uh, I'd like to move on to what might be the, the, the most exciting part of this, this uh, webinar, uh, to introduce the potential participants to the, uh, the guidelines of the prize and, the, and, and what's actually at stake for the prize. And I'm going to restart the presentation and hope it doesn't... Yeah, I think it's going to start at the right place. Yes, it does. Thank you. Um, so um the special prize global one health um well we've now learned a little bit more about what uh one health is uh and 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 what sorts of topics might be uh in scope uh but we've also we've made a, a, a very short list of topics that we find very interesting uh and and these include the following um we are very interested in, in projects or solutions or, or ideas that help us make uh, the agri-food agri system safer from zoonotic events. We're very interested in um, how to combine biodiversity conservation and restoration goals, uh, how to combine that with having food and nutrition security, to, so to, to have optimal bio, biodiversity as well as enough safe and healthy food for everyone. Uh, and this, of course, in relation to um, a One Health approach. Uh, we're interested in the climate change and zoonosis nexus. Uh, so where we see that climate changes, there's also a risk uh, shift uh, as to zoonosis risks. Uh, we're interested in developing true One Health policies. So there's lots of policies being made around the world um, that address um, single or maybe two issues that are important to One Health approach, but not all of them together. And in some cases, that is actually very important for people in the field to be able to do their work well enough. We're interested in farming systems, spatial planning, and how they relate to zoonosis risks. So if land use changes, uh, what does that do to the risk of zoonosis occurring? And we're interested in the transport and trade uh, uh, factors that play into zoonosis risks. Uh, it's, I think it's important to say that we've also put some uh, things out of scope for, uh, for the prize, and that includes uh, any issues that relates to antibiotic resistance. And that doesn't mean that we think that these topics are not important, but we think, um, well, we want to, to focus our prize a little bit and we want to uh, exclude that out of our scope. So if you think you have uh, an interest in, in these um, uh, topics, then um, by all means, uh, tell us your idea uh, and uh, let's see how we can develop it together. So um, at the beginning, Hanin already mentioned uh, a, a little bit about the form and the shape of the prize, um, but maybe to give you some ideas as to what sorts of outputs we might be looking for. These can include, um, for example, a research article for publication, a research project proposal for a grant um, that you might want to submit for further funding. Um, we're also interested in uh, papers or presentations for scientific conferences, or maybe uh, a really well-developed plan for further development um, or for uh, underpinning a partnership or to scale existing ideas to, to bigger scales or whatever um, your excellent idea might be. Um, and then of course, um, you might be most interested in knowing uh, what's in, in it for the potential participants and how do you participate? So what's in it is, is, is uh, on the next slide, but first uh, who can join? Uh, we're looking for teams of between two and five participants and the participants have to be uh, age between 18 and 35. So we're really looking for young people to share their ideas. So young researchers connected to a university or an institute. 
um, because we would like for you to also nominate a supervisor from your institute or your university to, to help uh, your team as well. Uh, we're looking for original work, so not something that's already been done or already been proposed by somebody else. And uh, the requested funding that you uh, think you will need for execution of your plans should not exceed 10,000 US dollars. And then uh, what can we actually win? Um, there are prizes for of these 10,000 US dollars to bring your idea to practice. Uh, and the time to bring your idea to actual practice would be uh, after the announcement of the winners. So that's in October 2023. Uh, and we hope that the projects can be concluded within a year's time. Um, some of the best teams get will get to present at the World Food Forum. Uh, and this is, of course, very exciting. And it, it, I, I think it should present to be a, a, an excellent opportunity uh, for teams to network, to get to know each other, as well as uh, relevant players and, and um, uh, experts in the field. Uh, and a great opportunity also to visit the beautiful city of Rome. Uh, and um, last but not least, uh, the opportunity to publish a paper, ideally in combination with the FAO. Um, Maybe I forgot to mention, but I know that Hanin has also mentioned this before. Um, the teams that will, uh, so between uh, submitting your two pager and your uh, um, idea for, for the actual prize, you will receive mentorship from a very experienced mentor. Um, so th what's the timelines? Um, I am going to say that I will not dive into too much detail here, uh, just to um, highlight the fact that the, the submission deadline for the first concept notes, uh, the, so that deadline is the 31st of May. Um, so you have uh, between now and then to uh, develop your concept notes, to get your team together, um, and to uh, well, uh, write it in the appropriate forms. And you can find all these forms and more information uh, online in the link that is uh, hidden a little bit behind my uh, photo, but on the next page, uh, on the next slide, there is a QR code that you can scan as well. Um, let's see if there's anything on here. So. In August, we hope to announce the finalists and importantly, the World Food Forum uh, will be held in uh, uh, October. So the winners uh, hopefully uh, are gonna be asked to clear their diaries and their calendars and join us in Rome. We really, really look forward to hearing all your ideas and your solutions. And here's the QR code to the website where you can find more information and there's more to come in the future as well. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited along with um, the speakers that we heard before to hear your ideas and to work with you to uh, bring them to practice. And then I'd like to hand over back to Miriam, uh, who is going to help us answer any questions that there might be. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Jaukje. And um, yeah, everything is also on the website and uh, we invite you now to also put questions in the chat. I see that Shona asked that will the recording link for this presentation and other details be shared via email following this session? Uh, yes, we will uh, share the recording and we will also put the links to the right uh, um, uh, websites for the application, etc. So we will send you an email. Yep. Um, yeah, are there any other questions? Otherwise, we are almost at the end of our session, I think. And um, yeah, want to ask everybody, yeah, please tell your colleagues, tell your students that are also interested to join, form a team. If you can, uh, we didn't get this question, but if you are uh, an individual and you want to join a team, you can also um, reach out to us because there might be more and then you can uh, uh, start a team together. So that's something that uh, you can consider. Excellent. I don't think there are any further questions. 
No. Okay. I think that I, I'm not sure, but if someone is uh, raising their, their hand, I see that Vishwa. Yeah. yeah, but we, we are trying to get okay. um, Sorry. our colleagues of FAO back in because, um, and uh, uh, please, if you have a question, uh, Vishwa, can you put it in the chat? Aha, uh -huh. I see something. So I guess, um, yeah, we will round up. I see and, that there is a, a question. Can you clarify more about the option of implementation VS research? Sorry, I, I, I didn't quite get that. In Q&A only, and it's yep. a question from Shona Richards. So can you clarify more about the option of implementation versus research? Ah, I see the question now. Um, Shona, I'm not sure that I understand your, your question. The option of implementation versus research. Uh, do you mean whether we'd give preference to either the one or the other? Or um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how to, how to read your question. Yeah, it could be that uh, implementation of a project uh, versus doing a research uh, project, right? Yep. Uh, for, uh, the, um, yeah. Uh, okay, so the clar clarification is, uh, are you looking more for implementation or for research? Um, I'm going to be I'm going to be very honest and I'm going to say that I I that might actually depend on the experience of the team. So should there be a much uh, relatively young team, uh, I I can imagine that they might want to focus a little bit more on implementation type projects uh, and that the relevance and in, uh, impact of such projects can be um, relatively big um, but if there are teams that are a bit, little bit more research minded or maybe a little bit more experienced then um, they might uh, want to sink their teeth into actual research so the answer to your question is um, i think we would be interested in either or rather in both <laughs> yeah. yes Thank you for seeing that question, uh, Annabelle. Oh yeah, there's somebody else uh, asking a question. Do we have to submit a two-page document as our proposal? Yeah, we will send you uh, the link to the concept note uh, that you have to fill in. And um, the questions are there, so you will, um, yeah, it, it will be clear, I think, when you see the link. Okay. Yeah, I think I think the form is quite clear. Yeah. All right. Then uh, thank you, audience, for your uh, attention. Thank you, speakers, for uh, all uh, all your thoughts on everything. And we are looking forward to receive a lot of proposals, and also to start working with you with uh, with the young research teams. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Goodbye.